it's entirely possible that they have like another withering whale or something ridiculous but we really hope they don't ruination would actually be legit annoying oh Today is the first day of the expansion and there are countless decks that I want to play that I've been dying to play. In fact, last night when I was streaming, that was the number one question. What's the first deck you're going to play tomorrow? What's, you know, the deck you're looking forward to the most? And, you know, I, I was answering yesterday on stream either something Lissandra or something Renekton. And I definitely want to build decks around those two. They are high on my list for things that I want to exploit. But secretly, I had been planning on playing an Undying list. If you know me, you know that in the past, one of my favorite lists ever is Undying. And now that we have Kindred, I'm going to try one version at least with Nasus. But I actually still think that just going Kindred in the existing archetypes, whether it's with Demacia or Noxus, is going to be the way to go. And that was going to be my go-to until I had an epiphany. I had a realization. And so today's list is Mono Shirima. Uh, it is trying to jam together enough landmarks to make Talia like a part of the top end, but it's really all around sand soldiers. Uh, I like to call this the sand people deck, AKA the Tuscan Raiders deck, because you are just sand people trying to rush down your opponent. And there's a reason that I wanted to do that as well. Today's video is going to be a bit of a shout out to anybody who started watching me during my time covering the Elder Scrolls Legends. So, uh, the format for the video is going to be the old school play two games, win or lose, and share the results. I used to do tons of deck testing videos like that. I, I mean, I would do deck spotlights. If I felt like a deck was good enough for you to try to grind the ladder with it, for example, I would do a deck spotlight and highlight choices. And we're still going to go through the deck choices for this, but... Then I would do what I call deck testing videos. And a lot of times they were either themed or me trying a new idea. And I felt like part of the learning process for those was that you have to show the good with the bad. And so it was always, you're going to play two games, win or lose and share the results. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go old school back. This is a throwback for my Elder Scrolls Legends fans. And the other reason that I decided to go with this list is something that is going to uh, be very apparent at the end of the video. So again, if you're somebody who watched me from the Tessel days, First of all, thank you. I love you. And just stick around to the very end because it's the real reason I decided that today this was going to be my day one build. This is entirely a nostalgia build for me. So without any other explanation, now we're going to dive into the deck so that we can get into the games because if you're like me, you are excited about this expansion. So uh, as I said before, this deck is going to be about Sand Soldiers because we're going full Tuscan Raider and then Talia for the top end. So we have to run enough landmarks to make her somewhat viable if we get her later. And as a result of that, I started with uh, Ancient Preparations. I think it's a solid one drop. It's a landmark that helps you with your Talia account. But also the pay one mana predict, I feel like is going to be a bit underrated at the start of the expansion but this if you're coming from like magic the gathering this is a very powerful effect at helping to smooth out your curve and i'm i'm looking forward to seeing how this plays out uh, yes i mean it's just a one cost two two but i think that the predict effect and then going with the synergy for talia makes this worth it uh dune keeper pretty straightforward sand soldiers but also uh this is just a spicy one drop when you're attacking on one being able to play a card swing for four and have your two and left over uh, again in, in the reveal video i talked about how this reminds me of the nightfall unit but you don't need the nightfall trigger to swing for four turn one stone weaving uh this is mostly just me i, I want to test this card like i'm gonna be honest it's partially here for the talia package but when we were doing reveals, I didn't know exactly how this card worked. And I kept saying that depending on how it works is going to depend on whether or not this is playable. And also it's going to depend on when you decide to play this card. So when it says landmarks you can afford, what I need to know is does that mean landmarks that you can play right then? So your current mana value or your max mana value. So if you have five mana, but you only have like two mana right now, right? and you play this card, are you going to be left just being shown one drop landmarks because you only have one mana available? Like, is that what's going to happen? Or 
instead is it going to show it based on your max value and so really this inclusion today is just me wanting to find that out because i don't know it so that i can incorporate this into my deck building and playing for future games uh ancient hourglass i think this card is great it's going to be our number one way i think to protect azir because he's kind of the centerpiece of our deck and i think that this is going to be a staple sharima card in so many lists because spending two mana at fast speed to potentially save one of your units is a pretty big deal uh emperor's dais straightforward we like sand soldiers this makes sand soldiers get this developed also this is like the perfect card for this deck because this synergizes with talia as well so this is like the centerpiece if you will this is the focal point even though it's not really the focal point this is the nexus that this deck is kind of built around uh rock hopper is just multifunctional. It helps with the Talia account. It also means that you can maybe dictate trades better, whether that means forcing your Sand Soldiers through to get that bonus Nexus damage, or whether that means using your Sand Soldiers to take value trades with other opposing like three ones, for example. Uh, I also think this card is potentially going to be good enough to be played in non-landmark decks. So I wanted to get some reps in with this and see how it goes, but I like it. Uh, Ruthless Predator. This is maybe my favorite Sharima card, period. And I know it's so simple, but I think this is such a bananas, just really good combat trick, especially for aggressive decks. Being able to dictate blocks and get bonus damage in is massive. I love this card. This is the whole reason I want to build around Renekton as well. So obviously I'm jamming three. Three Azir's because it's Azir. That's the point of our deck right now. Uh, running three Unraveled Earth, kind of for the same reason that I was running Rock Hopper. But also this helps with your Talia account. Also this cycles itself. So when it comes to like utility, I think this card is actually not half bad. Now, I think three of it, if I'm being honest, is probably too much right now. I think that more refined lists will likely not run this as a three of, but it's day one and uh, I kind of want to increase my chances of drawing it so that I can better assess its value. And so right now we're jamming three. Uh, Desert's Wrath, we're a Sand Soldier deck, so buffing your Sand Soldiers and summoning them to boot seems pretty good. And the fact that this is spell mana makes this very attractive because just like you can bank for an early Avalanche, you can bank for an early Desert's Wrath and really snowball your Azir value later. Uh, Golden Ambassador, I am really high on this as far as like a Sharima Allegiance card goes. Now, we're mono Sharima, so it's always going to trigger, but I think that trying to find a way to work this card in with predict in other lists is going to be really really spicy but uh this I, I was high on this during the reveal this reminds me of the celestial card where you draw a champion reduces cost by one and it gets plus two plus two now granted you can do that with spell mana and it reduces the cost here it's straight mana but it's not a celestial card you can just jam this in your deck it leaves a three two body behind and you still tutor for your champions so Azir is already very survivable at a 1-5 for his cost, but post Golden Ambassador making him a 3-8, Azir like doesn't die to direct damage at, at all at that point. Like let's let's be honest. So I, I like this card. All right, Sandcrafter. Again, Sand Soldier deck. Uh, I think that this card fits. High health means it likely gets to attack a couple of times. Um, lack of keywords is a bit of an issue, but really the Sand Soldier is your keyword of sorts in this list, so we're rocking it. Voice of the Risen. I think Azir is going to be pretty easy to level. Talia is going to be hit or miss depending on what you draw, but Azir, like we're built around Azir, so uh, he, he's going to be leveled, and once he pops off, playing this I think is very cost effective. It by itself is a 4 cost 5 4 at that point, but it makes your entire squad hit much much harder hits like a truck at that point so this is like your finisher of sorts big fan of this this is your arena battle caster for this deck um but just like a permanent battle caster and then talia so again landmarks uh potential finisher uh, you don't the downside is you don't have like a lot of things you're super excited to copy outside of maybe deus um or hourglass so like one of the spicy things and the reason i think hourglass is nutty is because this makes the stasis statue and then if you use Talia to copy it then you can copy whatever you saved with your stasis statue so like in that regard Talia's got something kind of spicy she can do with the list Deus is a really good one but outside of that this is really just like a secondary finisher and when I was looking at the rest of your Sharima champions the only other one that kind of stood out was Sivir but our Sand Soldiers 
outside of the nexus damage don't do a lot of upfront damage early on so i don't think you end up leveling her outside of the ruthless predator we don't have a ton of ways to get him going we do have the rock hoppers and you know we do have the unraveled earth this was my second choice if i did not go with talia i would have went with renekton to pair with azir in this list and there's entirely a chance that renekton azir in a sand soldier list works i might try that later but uh for today I, I i just wanted to do the uh the talia start and so we'll see how it goes but this is the list and so as i said before day one I, I, there's a there's a million things that i want to duck build but there's going to be tons of time for that so day one we're going straight into nostalgia uh we're going to play some games win or lose share the results uh, we're going to have fun and like i said uh, this is you know shout out to my old elder scrolls legends crew stick around for the end i love you all and let's just jump into the games all right as we dive into this first game here i need to just say that if i seem tired i am i was basically up all night last night i told myself that i wasn't going to do it and then i ended up doing it anyway i decided to make a push for master even though i just come back to the game and i'd been playing mostly memes i was semi close at the end of the season i was like all right we're gonna make a run and and i did it Ooh, what do we uh let's let's grab his ear i mean that's kind of uh, no no let's grab the dais i was gonna say it's kind of the point of our deck but the reality is we also want the dais like this is the center point of our deck but to finish my thought i am tired so I'm sorry if I'm a little out of it, but that's all right. We're going to have a lot of fun. I did end up making master even after I told myself that I wasn't going to do it. I did it. And I did it with 18 minutes to spare. 18 minutes was left in the season. Yeah. We'll take this trade because it still pushes two anyway. Good old Deus. Good old Deus. So here we are having fun with our sand people. That's a Siver. I don't know if we're supposed to play the Azir here or not. They have quick attack, so they're fine with uh, attacking that way. We can attack back into it with our Ruthless Predator next round. So I think that the Azir stays. We don't want to play this yet because we haven't leveled our champion. So I think you just Matador this through, let it through. Then I hit the button to hide my sneeze. Man, I'm all kinds of messed up, gang. But to finish the thought, we have enough for uh, Predator plus Azir here. We've met before, so that we can at least get rid of the spell shield. When I send you back there. Love the voice line interaction. Winter, take you. you know, I almost wonder if maybe we just don't care that this has spell shield. Maybe we still grab this anyway. Cause like we can do that and that and that gives us a little bit of an army of sand soldiers because we get the one from this attacking we get the one from the dais and we get our good friend azir here who uh, is now just two units away from leveling so they get a nice Control chant out of it. I'm really tempted to use this stone weaving to see whether or not this works the way I expect it to. Researchers, huh? That's actually really solid. It's interesting because like it, it didn't, I don't know if this, um, 
requires you to have mana or not. It didn't occur to me that I might have wanted to play that at five if there was a specific five cost landmark I was targeting, but I don't think that's the case. All right, that's that's a beefy boy. I mean, this levels our Azir. But we'd prefer I, I do that on offense, I think. Oh, they are they are threatening a lot of damage and we don't have a lot of tools to stop it. So we're going to have to lose something of import. I think I think we leveled the Azir here because honestly, we just want to see the animation. But that also gives us as a potential blocker. So in this instance, I think we do that and then just uh, eat the rest of this. For testing purposes, let's go ahead and uh, do this. This is kind of comical. Round start, create a sanctuary in hand could actually be really beneficial. So as weird as it sounds, I think we're going to grab this. Let them my name in glory. Get this down. Your will never be forgotten. Uh, this is actually kind of nice as well, but we'll play a dais just so that we get the effect. I don't think we're going to win from this, but we want the effect, right? We want that sand people, that Tuscan Raider effect of turning some folks on because like right now we're gonna get one two three four we attack with them so like we can swing with these two and get a full board and generate a fair amount of pressure so again we can do this to get our full board here Now we could have also swung with Azir here as well, but since these two already give us the full board, it's too bad that this is uh, only until end of round. I can't wait to do this deck proper, non-themed for today. Like doing this deck with a Hecarim and Shark Chariots feels like it has the potential to honestly just be bananas. But we wanted to go full sand themed on day one because it's our day at the beach. It's a relaxing launch. It's good harsh winds for them. They are still going to be left with the wild claw. Their Sivir levels up again. Such good animations for this expansion. And then we will, so they're going to be going for those lucky finds. We'll be dropping dropping this because it might matter. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have dropped this. <laughs> So we just need them to not find Overwhelm. Overwhelm means we maybe just lose. Maybe not. We're actually at the point where I'm not necessarily convinced we need Azir to pressure them. They did in fact find Overwhelm. If they don't play any buffs and this is just the way that it is, I let this through. Because I... I don't believe they'll have a way to ping us. So we have to really pray they don't have a combat buff here. 
Of course they have uh, Battle Fury, right? Why wouldn't they? Like, uh, Battle, Battle Fury is the only thing that really hoses us because we had the Sand Army up and coming, but with the Spell Shield and the Battle Fury, I think that's all she wrote for this game. We got to assemble the Sand Army, but we didn't get to finish somebody off, so uh, we're going to accept our loss. We're going to move on to the next game and see if we can at least get one win with our Sand Army for today's theme deck. And uh, apparently client is going to crash out a little bit as that game ends, but whatever. It's day one. Things are going to be a little bit awkward. We're just going to we're just going to jump right in. I can jump on the ladder again. A little bit of nostalgia. The old two games win or lose format. Been a while since I had done it. And this set has me feeling very nostalgic. Okay, so not only do we get a new Jarvan experience here. But I don't think we want any of these in our opener. We see Demacia and Shadow Isles, which I find to be kind of interesting. Uh, as much as I would love to like get this down, this opener on turn one is so spicy, it's so hard to pass up. It's so spicy. Just look at that. Four damage. Four damage. Coming in hot. Um... Let's go ahead with the rock hopper here get the sands down and I actually think that we make this trade because then that means no value trade we have to worry about a little bit later get a zier going they go with plaza that actually means a zier can attack so big shiny plaza here Maybe problematic if they have some uh, beefy Shivana action here. This is such a good top deck if they have a Shivana. So they're going to turn into the cavalry. They're going to try to eat our Azir. And then we're going to Hourglass, which means we can also do this. And we'll grab this. So there they go, running after our poor Azir. And we're going to try out the hourglass. And as good as this is, I think getting this down earlier than we did the last time makes sense. Uh, we do have Predator if we absolutely need it. But I don't think we're going to need it. question you have to ask yourself now is do we purposefully challenge into them and I think the answer is yes I think that we'll say uh, Azir gets the bonus and this becomes vulnerable this day. I think you do this this gets us to the point where we're threatening pretty well and we get the win we got the win with the sand people okay we're gonna play one more that one was fast we're just we're doing like fun theme stuff it's day one i mean obviously i'm gonna play a bunch of decks tonight when i'm streaming but uh that was so fast that we're gonna just go ahead and do one more good old champion mastery working at it so as I had said at the start of this, I, I want to play Kindred very badly, Lissandra very badly. Hey, speak of the devil. This is going to be the undying list that I... This was going to be my day one list. And then I had the epiphany about the list that I'm playing right now. And I just couldn't let it go. Like after I had made the realization... I just couldn't stop thinking about it.
All right, so we're going to go with a hopper here. Look at this place. We didn't do this turn one because we weren't on the attack, and I think later on, post Wrath, since we're on evens and we had a Wrath opener, I think that that's the right way to go about this. So they passed twice. I have to assume they're going to go for the Undying here. There it is. Not a shocker. Funny that this is going to... pick up the vulnerable when it can't block right like we don't we don't ever want to charge into that but whatever we're gonna start with the hopper in case they play something into a dune keeper you are children of Shurima. i go i go and then we're going to ship the sand people. It's a big withering whale. Uh, let's pop this down maybe while we can. So interesting. I have this one mana. So this is one of the reasons I wanted to do this because I said during the reveal video, I had wondered whether or not this was going to work this way when it says what you can afford. And the fact that that showed me two ones when I have one mana there leads me to believe it works based on your current mana available and not your total mana. Uh, let's grab the hourglass as insurance to be our draw. Let's say itch my nose. Something got all up in here. I'm sneezing, I'm itchy. So here we just take a vacation and bank our spell mana. Okay. Oh, ho, ho. this actually might be kind of spicy. It's entirely possible that they have like another withering whale or something ridiculous, but we really hope they don't. Ruination would actually be legit annoying. Oh! Okay. That's fine. We have this to draw another Azir at some point and we can still summon the army of sand people. I still have a, I have a suspicion this deck is going to end up being pretty good. Dang. The desert by my this is a good attack. I mean, we have nothing left to show for it afterwards, but this is a good attack. It's a good chunk of damage. I think you do this. And uh, this marks the weakest enemy, which would be this. So even if they have like a self-sacrifice here, I think we're fine. And then if we can drop voice. Yeah, so here's this, but that's gonna mark this. And so now we're just again worried about something like ruination again, vengeance again, stuff like that. Could have went for the open attack with, I guess, just Kindred there, but I thought getting this down was pretty relevant. And so now we'll wait and see. It's 
So they go hunting for answers. We keep going wide since they're under ruination. I think we actually might pull this out. That one attack post ruination, being able to play like two cards and push for an insane amount of damage was very beneficial. Like once you've set the sand army up, it's a bit spooky, gang. I don't want to eat whatever woke you up. Who's with me? Once you've got these things up and running, this is actually kind of spooky. Like, I know this is just kind of like a theme. I wanted to play sand people, Tuscan Raider, whatever. But I think I think a legit aggro Azir list is gonna have some legs. So the way they're blocking tells me that they probably have a vile feast or two. They don't have enough for a whale at the moment. And we got another victory. Wow. Okay, so the first one was a little disappointing. Uh, we made the army, but we ultimately lost to, you know, giant overwhelmed spell shielded units. But we, we just got a, a couple of fun wins on the back of this uh, Tuscan Raider Sand People deck. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Now, uh, I, I want to say thank you if you're watching this. And uh, again, give a special shout out to... You know, those who are still watching me who are from the Elder Scrolls Legends community, because the whole reason that I did today's theme, the reason I decided that this was going to be my day one build, just Mono Shirima, go all in on the Tuscan Raiders, the Sand People, was, if I'm being entirely honest, uh, yes, it was about making the puns and Tuscan Raider references, but it was so that I could end with this, because it's been a long time since I've said these words, and... I felt like now that we have a region that's just chock full of sand and we get, uh, you know, a, a sand people army, all these sand soldiers that uh, it felt it felt time to bring it back. It felt right. So uh, I'm going to say thank you. Like I always do. Thanks for watching. I love you all. And until next time, may you walk on warm sands.